Hi, this is Lauren from Lemon Sky Actions, LSP Actions, and I'm going to be talking you through how to create your own frequency separation layers um, and explain the process a little bit behind frequency separation for those who think it's just a big scary word. Frequency separation basically means separating the high frequencies, which is the uh, texture of your image, the, um, the, the highlights and the shadows that form texture, and the low frequencies, which is the tones, the colours, the undertones of your image. Separating these into two separate layers um, means you can work individually on the colours and the uh, textures of your image with um, a lot more non-destructively than you could if you were working on a flat image. Um, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can, but those that know me know I tend to ramble. I'm non-scripted, so um, please forgive me if I ramble on. I will try not to. Okay, so as you can see here on my screen, we have the word frequency. Can you see that? It's quite small. It says frequency. Um, this is actually a low frequency layer. It's very, very blurry. And what happens if I begin to zoom in to the uh, to the low frequency layer? Oh, look, separation. Can you see that? Separation is created as a high frequency layer and the word frequency I created as a low frequency layer. So now, unless you step very far away from the screen um, or perhaps blur and squint your eyes, you cannot see the word frequency. However, if I zoom out, there we go. Frequency separation. Frequency separation. That's quite cool. So how does this apply to your newborn photographs? Well, as a newborn photographer, um, part of our uh, job does does um, involve retouching a newborn skin. This is because we shoot for sharpness. Our um, professional gear and whether we use studio lights or natural light um, does invariably pick up um, all the little new blemishes of a baby's skin that wouldn't necessarily show so much to the parent's naked eye when they're holding their baby or even on mobile phone photos. But as professionals, when we take these professional style photographs, it is inevitable that we will pick up some of these very, very temporary spots, scratches, um, little cuts, bruises, anything that wouldn't normally be on baby's skin. Um, as professionals, we can see. Um, even things like little hairs, um, you know, hair out of place, bits of fluff, flaking skin and milk spots. There are certain parts of a newborn um, that I don't like to touch. I don't, I, I adore um, flaky feet and hands. I think that's part of being a newborn. So unless something is peeling and hanging off um, and doesn't look particularly um, appealing in a, in a long term photograph for the family's wall, then I would leave it there. But things that, um, like, you know, bruises where the baby here has scratched their face, which is quite common. Anything that perhaps has come up that day, um, as we know, you sometimes get parents who come in and say, oh my goodness, you know, yesterday they were fine, today they've broken out in this rash. Um, baby's skin is obviously adjusting to being out of the womb. Um, it's adjusting to the um, the hot and the cold air. Um, and baby themselves is, is adjusting to, to feeding, to routines, to washing power, um, to all the different people touching and handling them. And this can result in, um, you know, kind of little flare ups, rashes, scratches and bruises in the first couple of weeks of baby's life. And as professionals, we shoot for sharpness, like I said, so we get the lovely eyelashes and the lip detail. This also means it really magnifies any little spots, dots and scratches on baby's skin. Uh, most babies, you can fix this by using uh, the spot healing tool, the patch tool, um, the clone stamp, you know, your own kind of preferred methods of fixing. But what if you want to go in and make the fix a little bit more natural? That's where frequency separation comes in. You may find once you've done your normal edit, um, once you've corrected the exposure and the white balance and the tones and the colours of your image, you may find that the skin actually doesn't look as harsh as it does on your original photo. I'm going to do a very, <clears throat> a very quick edit here um, using the LSP Signature Newborn Collection. This should take just a minute or so. If, um, if you don't want to wait, you can feel free to skip the video on a little bit so we can start talking about frequency because, like I said, I do tend to ramble um, even though it's not intentional. Um, so for those of you who find my voice <laughs> annoying, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'll subtitle this. Okay, so I'm just um, I'm just running the LSP Signature Newborn Collection super, super quickly just to give you an idea of a base edit. Obviously, um, if I was doing a proper edit, I'd spend a little bit more time concentrating on this, but I know you really don't have time to sit around and watch me edit. I'm simply doing this edit first so I can show you the, uh, the difference a base edit can make 
to your um, to your image and the newborn skin. Okay, so I'm just taking some of the reds out now because the camera has picked up a lot of the reds. I've gone in quite heavy with that one, so I'm just reducing the reds. I'm going to paint away some of the yellow that has left. Okay, and soft skin. This is a very mild skin softener. Um, this doesn't actually take away any of the texture of baby's skin. It just softens down naturally. So let's see. So that's before and after using the Signature Newborn Collection. Like I said, um, that was just a very, very quick edit just to give me a base to work on. So I'm going to flatten that one down. Okay, so once you're happy with your general edit, you can then zoom in and have a look at the skin and you can decide yourself if you think it's worth using frequency separation or not. Um, for certain things, if there's just a few small patches, then you don't need to. You can use a spot healing brush um, or patch or clone. But for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use frequency separation. Okay, so first of all, let me explain frequency separation a little bit. I first started using frequency separation um, around six or seven years ago when I was a graphic designer. I still I still do do graphic design projects, um, but not so much now. I'm a very busy newborn photographer. Um, I, I worked within the music industry and uh, we called it airbrushing back then. Um, I think I think it still is called airbrushing, but this is basically frequency separation and um, I used it on model skin, um, on images when creating cool graphics um, and uh, vectors for album covers and posters and things like that. Um, frequency separation on newborns is a lot less heavy-handed and even though it uses similar principles to the fashion um, and music industry, we do kind of have a different approach to newborn frequency separation. So first off, um, flatten your image and duplicate the layer. Let's call this the tones. As I said before, the tones are flattened in the... Where is it? Oh, it's gone now. I've lost my layer. The tones are flattened um, or are created in a low frequency layer. That's the tone. So we've got our little frequency here. Uh, and we come out frequency. That's the tones. Separation is the textures. So I'm going to create the tones here. I'm going to duplicate that layer again and call it textures. The tones are basically the colours in your image and the textures are going to be what they say on the tin, the textures. So I'm going to make that one invisible for now and we're going to work on tones. For this I'm going to use a Gaussian blur. So you go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can play around with this. Um, you, you basically want the blur to kind of blur out all of the texture on your image but keep the you know the integrity of the colors i tend to go around 13 and um, like i mentioned before there is a frequency separation action by lsp by myself in the signature newborn collection in the parent um, retouch collection and in for the forestry school collection okay so that's the tones layer i'm now going to make textures visible again and to create the texture layer we're going to do something really interesting and i'm going to try and explain this as best i can we're going to come up here to image and we're going to hit apply image. Apply image is a, um, it's kind of more, I guess was first used for graphic design term. It basically means you're applying one image to another. You're mixing two images together and you can decide on the parameters of that mix. So I'm on textures, as you can see here, and I want to apply textures to tones. So I've clicked on textures and don't worry if I'm losing you a little bit as well. Um, all you need to do is make notes of the things I'm clicking um, if it's a little bit tough to understand. So go on to textures and hit apply image. OK, so this is where we start. The source is going to be your image that's open. So make sure that this, your image here, it will come up with the title here. Make sure you select the image that's open. The layer, you want to select tones or whatever it is you called your tones layer. You see how this is blurred a little bit now, selected the blurry tones layer. Channel RGB, yes, you want to select RGB. Leave the others, unless for some reason you have anything that is transparent, that you want to keep transparent and select transparency. But um, no, you, you want RGB. You want it to invert. Um, and as you can see here, I'm going to put that down to one because that's where it will be when you start. As you can see here, the image will go white. Um, unless you have other settings, your image will go white. OK, you want your blending mode. Now you can see here the image is inverted because it's applied one to the other and it's inverted. If I take that off, it just looks like just the tones layer. Invert, inverts the, um, the image, as you can see here. Blending mode, you want to set this to add, not subtract. You want to set, select it to add. 
and that will make your image go very white. Um, basically, the, the pixel values um, in an image um, arrange from 0 to 255. Um, 0 is completely black and 255 is completely white. When you select add, you are um, adding the pixel values of one image, textures, to the pixel values of the other image, tones. Um, so basically that is going to give you a higher number which results in a brighter color because 255 is white. So we are uh, making an incredibly white image here. So to change that, scale means how much you divide um, that pixel value by. And like I said, I'm sorry if I'm losing you. I'm just trying to explain this as well because I think sometimes, you know, knowing which buttons to click is great, but knowing how something actually works will set you in really good stead in the future uh, for using things like this. So the scale, this is set to one at the moment, which means the ad is at one. If I put it up to two, it will divide that number by half, which basically sets it back to zero, which will give us an absolute 50% gray image. There. So now the image is made up mainly of 50% gray. The, uh, the darker areas are lower than 50% gray and the lighter areas here, we have some kind of very bright whites are higher than 50% gray. The opacity, you want that as normal. You don't want to hit preserve uh, transparency or the mask. And you want to leave the offset as it is. Um, offset only is really relevant if you're trying to make an image darker or lighter. So leave the offset where it is and hit OK. So now our textures layer looks like this. Um, and that's not very usable, is it? That's not very good. But if we zoom in, I'll show you. We have the textures separated. So you can see the, the little spots are, um, are set as highlights here. The scratches and the spots and the dots here are set as highlights and shadows. So here's where the interesting thing happens. With your texture layer still selected, come up here to the layer blend mode and you want to come all the way down here to linear light, not to get completely confused with linear dodge. Um, linear light is, is basically a blend mode that um, it's it, 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 it basically is good for, well, sorry, I'm stumbling over my <laughs> words. Um, I should have scripted this. Okay, so it basically will darker any areas that are darker than 50% grey and it will brighten, um, it will dodge any areas that are lighter than 50% grey. So it kind of creates a dodge and burn layer um, based on the, on the, um, the levels of greyness in your image. So you select linear light and that bang goes back to normal. So the image looks like we haven't actually even done anything now, but we know on our textures here, we have a textures layer, add a layer mask and a tones layer, add a layer mask. I also like to add a new layer. Um, let's call it paint and clone um, between the two. There's a blank layer there. I'm going to select textures, paint and clone and tones and put them into a group. And let's call this frequency separation. Okay. So there's our group frequency separation and right now make that invisible visible it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference but this is where the uh, the really interesting bit starts and this is where we can actually start to use the frequency separation i'm sorry it's taken me over 10 minutes to get there but i really hope that um i've explained that well and you have at least a little bit more of an understanding of how to set up your own frequency separation so if i zoom in now and make textures invisible we just have the tones if I make the uh, tones invisible, we just have the textures. So I know that when I want to uh, remove harsh things like these harsh spots and harsh scratches, I can see here what's on the texture layer to be removed. If I want to change colors such as um, red splotches like here and some redness here on the arms, then I'm going to do that onto the tones layer. So let's get started with the tone layer. Um, I want to make sure that I'm mainly working with a very soft brush or a very soft clone stamp. Um, the reason I want soft is because the layer itself is very soft. It's very blurred. I don't want to create any hard ed edges. So let's go on to the, uh, the clone stamp. Uh, a nice low opacity, let's say 25 max. Uh, we want the opacity very low. Um, I would probably suggest going even lower. We want a very soft brush and you don't want your clone stamp to be very big. You don't want a nice giant one to be cloning with. You want a nice small one. 
basically kind of, you know, you want to follow the smaller areas of baby's face here, the contours. You see where the shadows are, where the highlights are. So on the tones layer, I've got my clone stamp and I am just going to select a layer I want to replace this red dot with, this red bit here. So I am just lightly painting that on there. So we can see now that is getting rid of the redness. Okay. You can also patch, but just be aware of the hard, the harsh edges patching may bring in. But right now it's not doing too bad a job. You may think it's not making much of a difference, um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually evening out the colours here. And as you can see, there are very, very slight edges here, so I'm just getting rid of those too with the patch tool. But I would recommend using clone stamp or a brush. So, oh, I've got a line there. So let's see here as well, where we have these red marks here. I am, again, I'm just going to patch those out of the way. Be very, very wary, like I said, of the hard edges. Or get your clone stamp, your low opacity clone stamp, and clone them away. Just be very mindful of um, where natural shadows and contours and colours fall within the image because you don't want to make any kind of flat areas um, or unnatural looking areas. You don't want to clone away shadows. So, you know, regularly check by turning on and off what you're doing. I'm going to do um, a very quick kind of cloning job here because um, I you know, frequency separation in itself can be quite a long task and I really don't want to um, keep you too long. I just want to give you more of a demonstration into what frequency separation can do. OK, we have some redness on the eyelashes, um, sorry, the eyelids as well. So I'm going to find a suitable area to clone a bit of colour in and just paint that down. So now I'm going to turn the textures on. We can see now we have got rid of some of the redness under baby's skin on the tones layer. And now I'm on the textures. I'm going back up to my patch tool. Um, patch is on the spot healing brush menu. You can use the spot healing brush tool. Um, you want it quite hard if you're going to use a spot healing brush because this is a hard layer. It's not a soft layer. Um, and you can start healing these away. But like I said, make sure you have your brush set to hard. So you can heal away the easy ones using a spot healing brush. I personally prefer to use the patch tool. So I am simply going to select these um, blemishes and spots, leaving the integrity of baby's skin. So I'm patching and replacing with areas that have the natural skin texture. So for example, I wouldn't select this spot here and replace it with eyelashes because that doesn't make sense. I would replace it with an area with the same integrity. At the same time, I wouldn't replace it with this skin down here because it's different to the skin up here. So you want to be, um, you know, sampling from areas that have the same texture. Because especially when you're zoomed in like this, it's very easy to go a little bit overboard and over edit. Um, depending on how new you are to techniques like this, it's very easy to over edit the baby. And like I said, right at the very beginning, we only really want to get rid of what wasn't, shouldn't have been there, you know, what the camera has magnified. We don't want to completely change baby. We don't want baby looking like a porcelain doll or painted because, you know, that, that can, unless it's done by an amazing digital artist, it can actually look quite bad. Okay. And the last bit here are these little spots, this rash that has come up on her arm. So I am just patching these out of the way. Or I could use the um, the spot healing brush again just to kind of stroke them on. But remember, like I said, use a nice hard brush, um, not a soft one, or you'll end up with very soft edges in your texture layers, and that doesn't look too good. See, I might even get rid of these bits of glitter there. So that is frequency separation on newborn skin, particularly good if baby has got baby acne. Um, you know, some babies can have a flare up of baby acne a few days before their session, which can leave the parents feeling quite upset, saying, oh, my goodness, you know, his baby's had a reaction to something and I don't want the portrait hanging on my wall of baby with a big reaction on their face. So you can use this to help calm down a rash scratches dry skin, you know, anything that is incredibly temporary and, um, 
you know, impacts babies' portraits. If there's stray hairs on the face, if there's a bit of fluff, if there's anything like that, see here is a piece of uh, fluff sticking up. So I'm just going to use the, um, what tool am I on? The spot healing brush tool to get rid of that. Okay, so that's frequency separation. I'm going to come back down here on the tones one more time and sort out that little bit of red there using the clone stamp. And then I'm going to come up to textures and do the same thing, although I'm going to put the hardness of the brush up a bit because I'm on the layer that I want to be harder. Okay, so frequency separation, let's see where we were before and after. We have kept the original texture and the integrity of baby's skin, but we've removed the um, the you know the blemishes and the temporary spots and scratches. I'm going to pop this here on top so there is our frequency separation layer. You can then flatten and you can you know finish off your edit as you normally would do whatever you would but like I said don't jump straight into the um, to the skin fixing um, do your normal edit first. So I'm just popping a bit of contrast there Soften the skin down a touch more and I'm going to sharpen the lashes and then this picture is done. So I'm sharpening the little details up again now. Just to pop one final detail sharpen on there. I'm going to soften the skin a little bit more. Um, and I'm just going to play reduce the reds just to get rid of these, um, these last red patches on baby that shouldn't be there. This is great for fingers and toes, um, you know, red marks, ears and things like that, that maybe because baby's a little bit warm in the studio or maybe just because, um, you know, just because. <laughs> okay. And um, one more, I'm just going to pop a tiny hint of brighten on and then I'm done. Okay, so that was our image before. This was with frequency separation and a rough skin edit, and that is a quick finisher. And that is how to use frequency separation and how to set up your own frequency separation layers. Uh, now that you've watched this, hopefully you can go back, grab a pen and paper and kind of write down the steps. But basically, duplicate your background layer, um, name one tones, name the next one textures, Blur the tones layer, image, apply image onto the textures and use the settings um, that I highlighted on there. Change it to linear light and you're good to go. What else can you use frequency separation for? Um, you can use it for removing wrinkles in blankets. Um, I'm just going to, rather than setting it all up again, I'm just going to play the LSP frequency separation, which you can find within the newborn set. See, it runs super quickly with a little instruction there. There's the LSP frequency separation skin tones and skin textures. You will find that the, uh, the, the blanket wrinkles are quite easy to get rid of on the skin tones layer. I'm going to use patch tool for this and I'm just going to patch them out the way. This is much better than just painting over blanket wrinkles because if I zoom in here you will see the blankets have texture. There's texture on the blankets. If you paint over that you're going to lose the texture. By using frequency separation it means you can keep the texture and just kind of remove these shadowed areas um, off the off the tones layer and that means you can pick and choose which shadows you get rid of as well I'm patching away quite merrily and I'm not um, I'm not losing any of the blanket texture while I'm doing this as you can see here So I'm literally just patching and then I'm going to come up here onto the blank layer and I'm going to select a brush on 100% opacity and on a low flow. Make it quite small and then let's sample from here onto the blank layer for painting and I'm just going to slowly start painting these wrinkles away, sampling as I go. See this image is uh, pretty much straight out of the camera, so it's kind of straight from Lightroom. And then you can come here from the textures layer and you can just kind of get rid of these last little wrinkles. 
again keeping the integrity of the texture of the blanket. So that is frequency separation to remove blanket wrinkles. Um, I have a special request to use frequency <laughs> separation to um, get rid of a tan line here. Um, I've cropped this image in. So let's play frequency separation. Obviously, if you don't have the actions, um, you can, you know, make your own frequency separation layers. OK, so I'm going to go straight in for the painting on the blank layer. Select a brush again on the low flow. Always low flow when you're painting with frequency separation. Select the darker skin tone and just start painting it in. Or you could use clone stamp. Either way, you know, whatever makes you happy. I'm going to take that flow down a little bit more. OK, so I'm just evening out the skin tone there. And as you can see, like I said, I'd recommend zooming out and checking it. That looks a little bit flat now. So I'm going to add as a layer mask in and I'm just going to kind of reduce the effect of the frequency separation there. Painting away the tan lines. You can see that there's a bit of shadow there <clears throat> that should be there that I've painted over. So I'm simply going to come back into the blank layer and I'm going to get rid of that bit there. Da -da. I'm going to come on the skin tones, get the clone stamp. Remember, a nice soft one when we're on tones. And I'm just going to bring that back up a little bit. So you want softness on the tones and you want hardness on the textures. OK, so tan line gone. Off on frequency separation for a tan line. And again, the cool little thing. Low frequency are the blurry bits. High frequency are the sharp bits. So I hope that really helped. And um, I am sorry about my rambling, as usual. Um, any questions about frequency separation, please feel free to um, to ping me on the, the private group, um, LSP Actions dash the Photographer's Playground. Uh, feel free to ask away. I'm always on there. And um, I really hope that video helps you understand um, the, you know, the reasoning behind frequency separation and the tools you can use um, to make frequency separation work for you.